It is the most successful fast food company on the planet. Feeding us on every high street, it's part of the landscape in 120 countries. McDonald's is the biggest brand in the world. But one company is constantly challenging it. Burger King. It's the thorn in the side of McDonald's. The annoying little brother. The two burger giants have been at war for more than 60 years. And it's kind of like fast food theater. As Burger King uses every tactic available, the battle of the burger bars is as fierce as ever. To poke fun at its well-established bigger brother. It's a brand rivalry, it's an ongoing battle. For six decades, a battle over our stomachs. Burger, that shapes how we eat. There was simply nothing like it. This is the story of how a super brand manages to stay at the top. They lure them in with the Happy Meals. And the bare-faced tactics its small arrival uses to challenge it. If you got within 600 feet of a McDonald's, then you would get a notification from Burger King saying that you could get a Burger King meal for a cent. As they both fight to survive in a global market that is constantly changing. We're definitely moving towards a more meatless future, and I think we're going to see a lot more plant-based food on the menu. Which one will you choose? Two beef patties. Add Big Mac sauce in a sesame seed bun, cheese, lettuce, onions, and pickles on top. In the US alone, over half a billion Big Macs are sold every year. Roughly 17 a second. It's the gold standard of burgers. And in the blue corner, the challenger. The Whopper. More beef, better taste. Created in 1957, the Whopper sells over one billion a year, making it the only serious rival to the Big Mac. With those 110 grams of beef, the Whopper smashes the Big Mac's 90 out of the park. In fact, the Whopper is almost an inch wider. And with 630 calories, it towers over the Big Mac's 540. So, how did these two burgers become the best-selling in the world? Rewind to 1939, as the US was emerging from depression. Business was booming, especially the motor industry. The sort of age of the motor car, 40s and 50s, this, this surge of this new toy that people could afford to use. Petrol was cheap, obviously. It was a major leisure vehicle. And uh, they were looking for something to do, and one of the big things you're looking to do is eat. Those hungry drivers represented a business opportunity. And in 1940, they opened their first restaurant on none other than Route 66 in San Bernardino, California. Demand was high, but service was slow. Too many items on the menu. They were doing everything from, you know, barbecued food, some burgers. I mean, the McDonald brothers were really kind of turning out every sort of food they could get their hands on. So they shut down their restaurant and decided on their tennis court how to lay out the most efficient system of food preparation so that you could get your hamburger in under 20 seconds. <laughs> This was assembly line cooking, and it mimicked the idea of the assembly line car produced by people like Henry Ford. It was fast food, and the first time really the world had seen food like this. The speed, service, and taste soon marked McDonald's out from the rest. There was simply nothing like it. And they had the sign out in front that said, over one million hamburgers sold. In 1954, over 2,000 miles away in Jacksonville, Florida, Keith Kramer and Matthew Burns were thinking about their new restaurant and were inspired by what McDonald's was doing. Burger King saw what McDonald's were doing, but they didn't mimic it. They did something very different, and they created something that tasted totally different. They had bought rights to an instant meat broiler that could give their burgers a flame-grilled taste to the hungry drivers passing by their new Florida store. When Burger King first opened, it needed something to really distinguish it from McDonald's, and the flame-grilled element really did that. It was something different, and it sounds really evocative too. It sounds delicious. 
broiling versus frying would sit at the core of the unparalleled rivalry between the two giants. Burger King presents broiling versus frying. I can figure McDonald's out. Everybody knows flame broiling beat frying nearly three to one. It was on TV. It, it does affect the taste, but it certainly is something that's vitally important when you want to separate yourself in a highly competitive market. You have a technique, you have a way of cooking, you have a way of presenting your food that is different from your competitors. So, what are you going to do? I don't go to Burger King. Aren't you In 1953, in San Bernardino, California, McDonald's fast food restaurants were booming. The chain had established itself in the US landscape, and by 1958, they sell their one billionth hamburger. Over at Burger King, the young upstart having followed McDonald's successful fast food model was slowly expanding, with each outlet featuring broilers to guarantee their unique flame grill taste. So you get the taste of the flame. And that was very distinct to what then seemed rather like, in comparison, a rather insipid product from McDonald's. But the new kids on the burger block wanted a product that would catapult them into the big league, just like McDonald's. Challenging the established approach at McDonald's, they came up with a burger that to many has become the most iconic in the world, the Whopper. The bigger the burger, the better the burger, the burger's the bigger at Burger King. The burgers are bigger at Burger King. As soon as you use the word Whopper, it is bigger and better um, than your competitors, and it has more value. It's just a bigger patty, it's a bigger bun, it's just a much bigger product. The Whopper was launched, and Burger King was its home. They wanted it to be bigger than anything sold on the more traditional McDonald's menu. Being bigger than your competitors drags people away from the competition and head straight for your outlet. In the history of brands, what's clever about the Whopper is that it signified a huge move for the company. And it's part of their brand armory that they've had ever since. Presenting the ultimate weapon. America loved things that were big, blousy, and beautiful. The Whopper was that, and it still is that. We hope it won't be necessary to do this again. The Whopper helped Burger King get noticed as the younger, hipper, more aggressive brand. McDonald's, meanwhile, carried on expanding their empire, building more of their iconic roadside drive throughs If you wanted a hot meal fast, you were swamped with options. One of the reasons for the success of McDonald's was they had this unique golden arches that came out of the building and came outside. And the reason why fast food operations in general had unique architecture was simply people would be driving by, they would drive by on a freeway or drive by on a highway, and you would know exactly what you're gonna get. Albert Acora runs a McDonald's museum on the site of that very first drive through Behind me is the original McDonald's sign. So this property is the original offices of Dick McDonald. This was his personal office. These are the original red and white tiles. There was a hidden persuasion about the McDonald's um, branding that became something so identifiable, it, it threw out the competition. Before the Big Mac, the restaurant menu was limited, but one item proved irresistible. McDonald's became famous for the french fries, and they processed all the french fries, peel all the potatoes for the next day. The Santa Ana winds, the dry winds, they air dry the potatoes. So we're sort of a semi-desert out here. McDonald's got extremely consistent image with the golden arches. All its stores look exactly the same. It's an amazingly consistent Americana feel to it. I think Burger King might lack a consistent identity, actually. Although it's trying to be nimble and cool and innovative, it probably lacks that brand identity and consistency that McDonald's has achieved over, what, 65 years or so. By 1962, the iconic Golden Arches become part of the very fabric of the United States. They were everywhere. 
A year later, the McDonald's behemoth introduced a new character, which further boosted its brand status as a bright, happy place to enjoy your meal. Now, where is that clown? Oh, Ronald! Ronald! A bit Ronald. creepy? Maybe. Effective? Definitely. Especially when you got delicious McDonald's hamburgers. Ronald McDonald all of a sudden became a very popular figure, particularly for kids. And so uh, national advertising really begins in 1964. Right. McDonald's hamburgers, french fries, and milkshake. Great brands have a livable icon. Um, Disney have Mickey Mouse, McDonald's have Ronald McDonald. The simplicity of marketing of actually having a Pied Piper to bring kids along to the outlet each Saturday was, in fact, a stroke of genius. Whilst McDonald's had a clown that became a household name, Burger King followed suit by creating a cartoon character. Hey, look who's working at Burger King. He was the Burger King. He was a cartoon character. He was designed and animated by the same people who were creating some of the most iconic cartoons at the time. Magician, make me a Whopper. Make you a Whopper. <laughs> OK. You're a Whopper. Uh, no, I mean, give me a Whopper. Phew. You've got these two brands fighting over the same market using very clever tactics and throwing every single piece of creative genius they could at it. You're a vanilla shake. Hey, you made me a bag of french fries. Eh, nobody's perfect. Despite McDonald's status, they knew they needed something beyond their traditional burgers to rival the success of the Whopper. And they hit the jackpot. To all beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions, and a sesame seed bun. To all... Two all-beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun. Two all-beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions, and a sesame seed bun. Two all-beef patties, cheese, pickles, onions, lettuce, cheese, pickles, oh, what am I saying? The recipe worked, and the Big Mac was a hit. Having now become a super brand in the US, McDonald's set its sights on conquering the UK. The UK restaurant scene kind of mumbled along in a fairly bleak way for quite a long time. So given that background and given the fact that people didn't eat out as a family, as a habit very often, when the burger arrived in this country, it was a really exciting glimmer of light. Imagine it was a bit like some kind of American fairy dust being sprinkled on the high streets. You know, we used to have all of these really terrible, kind of dull and gloomy shops, and suddenly here was this bright and shiny idea. Despite having led the way, McDonald's took a conservative approach and opened their first branch in a quiet suburb of London. Not so for Burger King, who wanted to challenge McDonald's success by opening their store two years later, slap bang in the centre of town. They opened in the West End, just a stone's throw from Piccadilly Circus. You know, the city's area of bright lights and excitement. And I think that tells you a lot about what Burger King had in terms of its ambition. It felt that we were biting a piece of that American TV and movie land that we were hypnotised by, by either the square or the big screen. Within a decade of the first London opening, whilst Burger King are making a splash in the heart of London's West End, their 14 stores are nothing compared to the muscle of McDonald's, who have around 200. And it wasn't just the UK that McDonald's were taking over. The Golden Arches could be found in 35 countries. McDonald's became successful with their better marketing, better PR, um, greater ambition, um, forthright determination, and clever licensing. So what did Burger King do? They stole one of McDonald's top marketing executives from right under their nose. Don Smith was third in line to the CEO at McDonald's, and so when he jumped over to Burger King, that was a massive coup for them. Billions of dollars are in place for this, and to remain at the top of the game, it's, it's a war, it's a battle, it's a ruthless fight. Smith poached more McDonald's senior staff to Burger King and launched what he called Operation Phoenix to restructure the company as a brand to challenge its established rival. 
Burger King introduces the Battle Not surprisingly, a similar menu to McDonald's soon appeared, which introduced speciality items like fish and chicken burgers and breakfast meals. Scrambled eggs, omelets with cheese or Creole sauce, the crisp sandwich with sausage, ham or bacon. McDonald's had been serving breakfast since 1972, and when Smith moved over to Burger King, he took a lot of that success, a lot of that knowledge, and really plowed it into Burger King. It's a delicious new way to feed the troops. The all-new breakfast spread from Burger King. A tactic they made no attempt to hide. Far from it, Burger King actually released a highly provocative commercial poking fun at its rival. In it, their company icon could be seen breaking into McDonald's HQ and stealing their breakfast recipes. It was a real kind of kick in the teeth for McDonald's, especially when Burger King then started shouting about it in adverts. I don't think that guy is supposed to be here. Smith also introduced a new kids character called the Magic King to attract more kids into the stores. Burger King do seem to always be sort of second fiddle to McDonald's. They're always two or three innovations, two or three steps behind McDonald's. It's as if they're waiting to see what will happen when McDonald's go into a particular territory. It's the Magic Burger King! Where? That's not the real Magic Burger King. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, yes, it is. The Magic Burger King just fell flat. Now watch me, kids, when I twist my ring like magic. We're at Burger King! And it just shows, to a certain extent, how clever and how iconic Ronald was and how difficult it was to flip. McDonald's were about to deal a further blow to Burger King with a product that would be a runaway success. Seen here in the hands of two more of America's top food vloggers. It's not a bad meal, it's not a sort of mediocre meal, it's a happy meal, it's a celebration. It's a very simple idea that it brings a family together. The main reason on why they focus on children is they will bring the parents in. And so the parents will come in and order food in addition to the children. So consequently, uh, it's, a, it's a double win for them. The kicker of the Happy Meal is, of course, the toy. The Happy Meal contains a main item like a hamburger or chicken McNuggets, a side item like French fries or apple slices, and a drink. Hugely popular in the US, they sell $10 million worth a day, 89 of them a second during peak time. The one thing that so many brands want to do is to try and surreptitiously uh, hook kids so that they have customers for life, and they want to do it in a way that's legal. It was probably the most effective piece of marketing, not just sensationally successful, but historically quite astonishing. The success of the Happy Meal must have hurt Burger King, because what it did next was perhaps the most aggressive act in corporate rivalry ever. Do I look 20% smaller to you? I must to McDonald's. When I order a regular burger at McDonald's, they make it with 20% less meat than Burger King. Unbelievable. You know, Burger King doesn't have the same reach as McDonald's, and so therefore you have to have better, funnier, cleverer, smarter ideas. It's always there, always come out with a new idea, always come out with a better idea. It must be very irritating if you're McDonald's and Burger King's out there somewhere doing something. Luckily, I know a perfect way to show McDonald's how I feel. I go to Burger King. Aren't you hungry for Burger King now? Having constantly provoked them, McDonald's had had enough. They filed a lawsuit to prevent the commercials airing, but failed in their bid. Burger King, having challenged them and won, were delighted, and the ads kept on playing. Burger King is always the annoying little brother. It's the thorn in the side of McDonald's, and McDonald's just cannot shake it off, however much it tries. But Burger King would keep pushing and poking fun at them throughout the 80s, creating a brand rivalry unparalleled. And with billions of dollars at stake, for Burger King, no challenge was off limits. In the mid-80s, the fast food giants McDonald's and its younger rival, Burger King, were about to enter a golden period as high street spending increased for both companies, creating seriously healthy profits. The 
McDonald's is opening another 100 restaurants in the new year. Burger King, its main rival, is opening 55. The battle of the burger bars is as fierce as ever. To gain even more of a foothold, the two companies turn to advertising, and between them spend nearly $300 million in 1983 alone. McDonald's stronger brand was plowing ahead with 37% market share, whilst Burger King's 16% was little more than an annoyance to those working under the golden arches. For Burger King, however, provoking its big rival allowed it to have more fun in its ads and be more original in the way it served its customers. May I help you, sir? Two Whoppers, two Whopper Juniors, and four Coca-Cola. And would I have to wait long if you made one Whopper with no pickle and no lettuce? No, sir. Hold the pickle, hold the lettuce. Special orders don't upset us. All we ask is that you let us serve it your way. Burger King's Have It Your Way campaign was quite interesting in that you could tailor your own burger. McDonald's has always been about consistency, right? So uh, Burger King was trying to make that a weakness of McDonald's. It was saying it's too predictable. Now that's the way to do things, our way. Have it your way, have it your way. In a way, burgers are classic brands. There's not much to choose between different hamburgers, so you have to spend a lot on marketing to win market share from one to the other. Decisions, decisions. Taking pot shots at McDonald's became something that defined the Burger King brand. The McDLT's fried, so it tastes, well, fried. The Whopper is flame broiled to taste more like a backyard barbecue. The McDLT is the one they'd rather serve their way. The Whopper is fixed your way to your taste, all of which should make your basic decision very simple. It just shows how smart you have to be that when you're potentially the underdog, um, you can actually have cleverer, irreverent communication that it can infuriate and confound the competition. But it wasn't just the burgers that were raking in the profits. What most people don't realize is that the humble McDonald's French fry is actually the best selling fast food item of all time. Fries are the unsung hero on the McDonald's and Burger King menu. If you think about it, you get fries with pretty much everything you order. And also, for a long time, it was the only thing vegetarians could actually eat when they went there. McDonald's might outsell Burger King, but who has the best tasting fries? Burger King medium fries are a third thicker than McDonald's. That could be the salt, as Burger King fries have a whopping 30% more than McDonald's. It's the 1990s, and McDonald's bid for world domination is cemented, as over 1,000 new restaurants open every year across the globe. One of the largest McDonald's in the world was in Moscow for a long time. In the UK, they're everywhere. Burger King, however, has failed to come anywhere near matching McDonald's scale, lagging far behind with less than a third of the amount of stores. Things couldn't be better for McDonald's. But in the late 90s, fast food comes under attack, and McDonald's scale and visibility make them incredibly vulnerable. The 1970s and the 1980s were a time of glorious growth for McDonald's. And I suppose it was mainly fueled by its very simple popularity. But once McDonald's crept into the 1990s, the brand started to come under attack from all sides. McDonald's attracted a lot more criticism, and that became, to a certain extent, the end of what had been, particularly in its early days, a bit of a fairy tale. The anti-capitalist movement lines up McDonald's as target number one, and protests grow across the globe. A group of Greenpeace activists make a string of allegations about animal cruelty, unhealthy food, and poor working practices in a case that became known as McLibel. McDonald's won the case, but they lost the PR battle. The big story was of this corporate beast against the idea of freedom of speech. It was a PR disaster. 
And being the global market leader meant that when fast food came under scrutiny, it was McDonald's that took the brunt of the blame. The thing that most appealed to the British public, the thing that propelled it into this machine of growth, the idea of quick, cheap, family food, is also the thing that opens it up to the charge of being responsible for the obesity epidemic in this country. From a PR point of view, Super Size Me was a turning point for McDonald's. It made influencers at the time think that if we were going to sustain our life just purely at McDonald's, look at the disaster to my health. And that caught fire. And that was incredibly difficult to contain. Because if you're going to consume McDonald's over a period of time on that scale, you're going to die. That's not good for a brand. McDonald's claim the film is flawed. A year after the movie's release, McDonald's and then Burger King introduced salads alongside veggie wraps, smoothies and fruit. As a non-meat option, for many years, both chains had also been selling a fishy alternative. McDonald's, as always, pioneered it, and Burger King followed suit. The sandwich was the first non-hamburger item to be launched. It was released to help sales in Catholic areas, where customers abstained from eating meat on Friday. Ingredients, a fried breaded fish fillet, a steamed bun, tartar and a cheese. Burger King's alternative, the big fish. And it's just that, with 188 grams of Alaskan Pollock to the fillet's 156 grams. Big fish wins hands down. The big fish debuted in 1978, shortly after the new McDonald's exec switched camps to Burger King. When it launched, it went by the name The Whaler. Just when you thought this was the big fish in the sea, Burger King brings back The Whaler. Crispy and in true fish. Burger King fashion, they immediately went after their competition, blatantly showing McDonald's filet of fish packaging in the ad. The big fish initiative by Burger King, that's just an example of it picks an area like fish burgers and it decides to take that kind of gorilla attack. So uh, in literally in this tent, a, a Jaws type attack on its rival. The whaler doesn't get swallowed up by the bun like some others do. You know who, yes, you know who. Aren't you hungry for the Burger King whaler? With all the bad publicity surrounding burgers, some consider a fish burger a healthier alternative. But is it? I ask my law students who are about the brightest in this country, to look at three different items, and I ask them to choose which is healthiest. Filet of fish, which people think is kind of healthy, or chicken McNuggets, or a greasy bacon cheeseburger. Which is the healthiest? Almost always, my bright students say fish. Chicken McNuggets, usually in the middle. But a greasy hamburger with cheese on it, oh, that's not healthy at all. And then I project up on the board exactly what's in it. If you look at the fish, 470 calories, 26 grams of fat. You look at the cheeseburger, it's got 14 grams of fat, about half what you get in the fish. Here's the problem. McDonald's knows that most people think this way. Fish healthy, cheeseburgers very unhealthy. Having taken the lion's share of the blame, McDonald's and latterly Burger King had been forced to change their menus and jump on board the healthy lifestyle bandwagon. Healthier options here bolster McDonald's argument that tackling obesity is all about offering food choices and then letting individuals take responsibility. We've embarrassed them into providing more healthful entrees. We have pressured them to provide more nutritional stuff for kids. What McDonald's did was to listen, and they knew radically they had to change the brand or they would die. In the 21st century, McDonald's and Burger King have been at war for nearly 70 years. 
with the young pretender constantly poking fun at its older, established sibling. But believe it or not, in 2015, Burger King for once took a mature approach and attempted to make peace with its bigger rival to create a unique product. They offered, through newspaper commercials, let's join together for charity for one day, merging the Big Mac with the Whopper. What is Burger King up to? They're wanting us to talk about a marketing gimmick. McDonald's response just left everybody feeling flat. It may be a lost opportunity for McDonald's not to um, acknowledge the war that's been going on, but I can understand why McDonald's doesn't want to acknowledge its little competitor. So it was back to the drawing board, or rather the battleground, and Burger King did what it did best and took another swipe at McDonald's again. Burger King decided to react against the Happy Meals and say, actually, that people aren't happy all the time. They created moody food, real meals. Sometimes it is said that it's only true if it makes you laugh. And I think the best advertising are the ones that we really laugh at. I want my Whopper. Despite constant attacks from its small arrival, for both companies, change was on the cards. We're actually seeing a lot of really exciting innovation on the high street, so a lot of independents are taking the fast food model and using it to sell healthier fast food. Sales in the fast food market are up 34%, and the food, like the profits, is also getting healthier, bringing in new competition that caters for customers with concerns about animal welfare and the environment who are suspicious of the ethics of the two US giants. And they knew radically they had to change the brand or they would die. I suppose one of the great phenomenons now is a genuine search for healthy alternatives, and it's becoming mainstream. You do feel that they are trying to adapt to the age, but actually the age now is moving much faster and the change is coming on a lot much more quicker than I think both brands can face. 7% of British people now identify as vegan um, and I think more and more people are becoming flexitarian and looking to reduce their meat consumption. So McDonald's really needs to get into the plant-based food technology game and start offering more vegan options for their consumers. They are super tankers. It is impossible to turn quickly um, to face these changes and these culture wars that are igniting within social media. We are on the cusp of a vegan food revolution. Plant-based food technologies are set to explode in the mainstream. Burger King and McDonald's uh, are very hastily trying to get onto the vegan craze. They're not just dipping a toe in the water of veganism and vegetarianism. They are plunging in and they are thrashing around to try and, you know, fight for their own territory. But for the first time in their history, McDonald's seemed to have taken a back seat in the battle. It looks like Burger King may have stolen the thunder from its big rival, producing something not extraordinary, but impossible. It tastes like meat. It bleeds like meat. If you've got your eyes shut, you probably think it is meat. But it's not. It's a 100% vegan burger made from the protein heme, which is found in plants. And Burger King launched it across their US stores, boosting its sales and street cred. Burger King has really put its weight behind the Impossible Burger and it's actually increased sales 50% across the US. And what's interesting, a bit like the Greg's vegan sausage roll, is that there's this kind of halo vegan effect where people go for the vegan food, but they might actually end up buying other products as well. But how does the Impossible Whopper compare with the real Whopper? Burger King have often been two steps behind McDonald's, but I think with the Impossible Burger, Burger King have beaten McDonald's at their own game. And the challenger to the fast food crown recently employed new technology to come up with their most outrageously aggressive marketing tool to date. If you downloaded their app in the United States from certain areas of the United States, if you approached a McDonald's, if you got within 600 feet of a McDonald's, then you would get a notification from Burger King 
saying that if you retreated to one of their branches, you could get a Burger King meal for a cent. So what now for McDonald's? Could this be the end after 60 years of their dominance over our stomachs and wallets? Or can they bounce back? We're definitely moving towards a more meatless future, and I think we're going to see a lot more plant-based food on the menu. As a person who has looked at McDonald's for a long period of time, is how quickly they have changed and adapted. And McDonald's is going to continue to innovate and continue to change. Perhaps we're going to have to see vegan McDonald's opening up. Perhaps we're going to have to see uh, some McDonald's becoming super uber premium. Perhaps we got to see, in some areas, uh, McDonald's becoming incredibly cheap, going massively down market. Despite our desire for a healthier lifestyle, you see more and more burger chains, you see more and more fast food. So as long as we've got the option to eat healthier food, I think they will continue to thrive. In the current social media landscape, it feels like Burger King are slightly edging towards the win. They're a bit more fearless, slightly more bolshy. Consumers really love that fast food theatre. Don't write off either Burger King and certainly not McDonald's. Their history, their power, their brand stature uh, certainly indicates that they are going to be around for a long time. This is the story of a war that's been going on for nearly 70 years. McDonald's may have beaten Burger King in the battle to put a store on every high street, but together, the rivalry between them has influenced how and what we eat. Tastes will continue to change, but as long as people need food, these two super brands will continue to find new ways to adapt.